Right. So what we're gonna be doing right now is building out this new SIG Rattler that we just got a couple days ago. And I haven't really had time to put a light on it and a sling and all that different stuff. So what we're going to do, rather than building it out in the armory because we're low on a few things, we're just gonna come over here to our shipping and fulfillment building, collect all the things that we need, talk through the build, and actually show you guys what's going on. So this is a 300 blackout Rattler. It's tiny, tiny, as you can see, short barrel. I went ahead and threw the Surefire SPS suppressor on there, which is almost as long as the entire gun. Uh, and there, that is gonna change, if I am using this, that is gonna change some of the accessories that go on this gun that we'll, we'll get into and talk about. I went ahead and threw our Wilcox Boss on here. This is a cool optic. It has integrated IR laser, Viz laser, and IR illuminator. Granted, the IR illuminator is pretty weak, and the red dot that is also built into this optic is very weak. Um, but this optic was originally designed for guns just like this. Uh, it has a throw lever for your supersonic zero and your subsonic zero. Super rad and pretty cool. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go down the line. So we have what's called uh, zone picking uh, here in the fulfillment building. So we have the manufacturing facility here, and this is fulfillment and quality control. A bunch of offset mounts getting quality controlled right here. Got my two little tools. Got my torx and my hex, because this is what I'm gonna need to put all my accessories on this gun. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through with a bin, and we're just gonna grab everything that we think we need to finish this gun out. Kind of like a cooking show, uh, more or less. So the picking line starts, uh, basically, every zone has a letter indicating uh, when an invoice, when you all order from us and you get your, you know, your little, your, uh, what's it called? I guess your invoice, although you've already paid for it. You'll see letters next to each accessory, next to each you know, item that you purchased. That letter corresponds with this, an area here on the picking line so that the pickers can come in and see you know, Alpha and Echo and they know I need to grab one product from here, you know, one product all the way at the end. So I'm basically gonna do the same thing. We need to bend. And we're just gonna go through one at a time. Now I don't know where everything is exactly, so I'm basically just gonna when I see a thing that I want or that I need, I'm going to just steal it. I'm going to nick it. Uh, we're going to just run off with it. So belts, Orions, nylon, don't need any of that. Most of the stuff's actually probably down over here. Uh, belt loops, okay, slings. So we have lots of different options here. Black, Coyote. Uh, these should all be in stock too. Um, let's do, for this build, probably black or gray. So this is, that's green. Ah gray so we'll do gray and we need a mag pole asap we're gonna need two qd two qd little cups so mag pole vfbcm uh two mag pole swivels to go with the sling all right we're good then we'll come on down so this is where we get into the lights because the light that's the big thing i need to put on the gun is a light a pressure switch and because uh, it already has an optic and a laser technically, so the big thing is having a light. Now there's a couple things to take into, uh, take into consideration. A, we're gonna do a Surefire light. A standard Surefire light, so M600 black, this is probably what we'll end up doing, comes with a Picatinny uh, attachment. Now the Rattler is M-Lock, so I'm going to have to either do a M-Lock Picatinny section to put on the side of the gun, or what is generally preferable and slimmer and better and lighter and all that, is I actually get a direct M-Lock mount to this particular light. So we'll go ahead and do the M600 because it's rad. Uh, we can either do the, I just saw it here, the Arasaka inline mount. So the Surefire light will attach directly to this and then this is gonna M-Lock directly into the fore end itself. So I have a short one here. I have, I have this one for a reason, I'll show you why. And then we'll go ahead and grab our uh, M-Lock light bar, also made by Arasaka, uh, our design though. So we'll put that in there. Um, we need now a rear cap and either a mod button or a dual switch. We'll actually do a dual switch, uh, provided I can find one. Yeah, rear cap, definitely want one of those. And here are the dual pads right here. And I'll show you guys this. For this particular gun, it'll make sense. So I have the rear cap for the Surefire, so I'm gonna attach a different pressure pad. And I have my dual pad right here, and I'll show you guys what's going on. The only thing I need now you know, I could grab a pack and put that on there, or a different optic, you know, throw an Aimpoint Pro on there, you know, getting weird. Uh, although it'd actually be a sweet little setup, or an EOTech, or, an, you know, uh, we have RMRs, but we'd have to put a, you know, an RMR mount on there. Leap sights, an Aimpoint T2s, a Razor, that could be fun. Uh, we won't do that, though, we won't get that crazy. 
uh, we'll go ahead and grab a BCM grip. Uh, and I'll show you guys why that might be good. Ah, so here. Uh, again, it's m -lock, so I'm going to get the m -lock one. m -lock grip. Boom. And I'll show you guys why. All right. It's our box of ingredients. I feel like I'm on a cooking show. I now have 15 minutes to cook an awesome concoction. We have our box of stuff. We will go ahead and start with the... Uh, We'll start with the light because the light is going to be the sling, the sling, and the the foregrip can that can wait. So Surefire M600 comes with a Picatinny mount, kind of like I talked before. So generally speaking, the way Surefires are shipped is they have the batteries inside of them already, which is great. Getting down to mounting your Surefire. So right now, Picatinny mount obviously isn't going to work on this gun, and I have no unless I mount it to the top like this, which is actually like something that people do and can do. And then you kind of just wrap over the front and you know activate the light and make sure that it clears your you know your optic. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do something that weird because I need to leave some room for the pressure switch. So what we're going to do is I can either use the Arasaka inline mount, which gets the Surefire super close to the rail. I'm not going to be. It's going to mount like closer. It's not going to be able to push out further on the muzzle or anything like that. Uh, or I can use our light bar. So the light bar, the reason I designed this and came up with this years ago is I wanted a way to push a light, and this is exceptionally important on a gun like this, I wanted a way to push a light further away from the handguard, especially on a little gun like this where I, I don't have a lot of real estate or just room to put my hand. Now if I move the light to the other side of the gun, not as much of an issue. But because this gun has a folding stock and folds to this side, I generally like to keep all my stuff on this side of the gun. It just makes you know concealing in a bag or just carrying, transporting, and all that stuff a little bit easier. The other reason for the light bar, uh, you know, for this design with a cantilever mount that pushes the light further out, is when I am running a suppressor uh, on the weapon, that helps get the light further down, where I won't have a bunch of glare off of the suppressor or suppressor shadow or anything like that. So as you can see, this would be the setup if I plan on running a, a suppressor. Uh, for a, you know, if it's like my main setup, I'm always running the suppressor. If I'm not always running the suppressor, maybe I don't own a suppressor, you know, and I have a Rattler as my little bag gun. Okay, great. Now the M-Lock's misbehaving, you know, and, and it, it, that's not, oh, come on. There we go. And my, you know, I'm not running a suppressor. That's when I would get something like this. This is the Arasaka inline mount. I don't have to cantilever it out. And that's just going to sit, you know, right here, flush to the rail probably something like that, maybe in this slot, and that's gonna mount the light about right there, flush with my muzzle device, and I'm set and I'm good to go. So it really comes down to, you know, what is the build, kind of what are we trying to do with the gun, and that's gonna, you know, depend, you know, based on that, I may get a different mount, whether it's, you know, this little flush mount or this light bar right here uh, that we make, or don't make, Arasaka does, but we came up with. So we'll go ahead and do the, the light bar, because the light bar is rad, and uh, that's what we'll do. So I got my two screws. I have the light bar already has the M-Lock ready to go. So all I have to do is disconnect the Picatinny uh, from the light itself. So I'm going to need a little Torx, which one of these should work. It should be this bottom one. If it doesn't, we're going to have some problems. Oh, it does. Oh, good. So you literally just unscrew these. I saved these, but I have so many of them, I'm probably just going to throw this one away. Don't throw it away, though. Keep it. Usually what I do, I'll show you, I'll show you what is a useful option. All right, so the, the Picatinny mount is off, and what I like to do is take the original packaging of whatever the mount is that I'm using, and literally just chuck the whole thing into that. So if I ever want to swap back, Put it back in the original packaging. I know that's where the original Picatinny is. So Picatinny and the two screws are there. Don't need to use those screws that come with the Surefire Picatinny because all these other mounts come with new screws that are better, bigger, bulkier, awesomer, quicker, faster. So light bars just like this. I take my two screws. They're Torx. I then take my little Torx thingy. Guesstimate. It's going to be the middle one. Well, it's going to be one of the two. Boom. First shot. What I do is uh, I don't do Loctite. You can. But I also swap lights around and mounts and stuff like that. I just do uh, hand tight and then like an extra like half turn and it's good to go. 
The only thing that's ever gotten loose on me, as far as these mounts go, have been the uh, actual, like, where it attaches to the rifle. So it's actually more like only a quarter turn. And tight, and then, there we go. That'll be good. That ain't going nowhere. And since I'm running the suppressor, I'm going to go ahead and, actually, I'll pull this now. It'll be a little bit easier, because I can manipulate the entire mount. I'm going to take, so it's, it normally comes with a little clicky cap. Uh, full click for constant, hold for momentary. I'm not a huge fan of these. So what people usually do, especially if they want to run a pressure pad or a mod button or whatever, is you're going to need one of these suckers. This is the Surefire rear cap post. So I take this little guy right here. So he's ready to receive the uh, thingy. I'm going to go ahead and put this all the way out. Make room for my hand and also get it out there with the uh, suppressor. So I'm going to come in here, tighten down the m lock. Make sure it's straight. And again, hand tight with a little extra. You can lock tight these as well or vibra tight them or whatever. I haven't. Occasionally, a couple times they've come loose, but generally not a problem. So I'm put the uh, air socket back in here for later. So now I've got the light on the gun, just like I demonstrated on the same side with the stock, so I can still get on the gun just fine. It's not in the way when I go to add the suppressor. Boom, I'm set. And look, this is how much we're dealing with of uh, this much like splash on the suppressor and shadow. Not too shabby. That's one reason to use the long surefires. The short surefire would bring it to like right here. Uh, so if you do have a super long suppressor, that's where I'm like, you know what? I want the extra long boy. Uh, it takes an extra battery as well. It is going to add some weight, but it will also get a little further out on the gun. So dual pad. Now I don't use these super often, but they do have uh, some use cases. I like to split my buttons uh, on my like PEC 15s and stuff usually. So I have my uh, light on one side or like light on the side, my laser on the top, something like that. But for this gun, how small and short it is and like kind of what's going on with it, packaging, get rid of it and that, oh, and this, is uh, this actually has a built-in LA, uh, LA5, PEC-15, Appiol, you know, whatever uh, attachment right here or uh, inst thingy that plugs in. And then it has the Surefire itself. And this is a nine inch cable because uh, I think we used to sell the seven inch, we went to nine because it just worked on more guns. And I think I will need, actually I wouldn't need nine on this gun, but hey, why not? So basically what's gonna look like, and we're not gonna tie it all down because I don't have all my stuff for that. All I, all I need is really tape. Is this actually rounds? This is what's really cool about this laser. This takes a standard insight plug, right? And here's the cool part. So I go back here and I turn on my optic, right? So now my optic's on. If I go all the way to the bottom or I go all the way to the top, now when I activate my laser button right here, I'm actually going to be activating the laser uh, from this particular uh, optic. So on this gun, it's great because I don't have a lot of room for like a pack. I don't have a lot of room for a switch as well. I did mount this on a riser. So when I'm here with my thumb activating, I'm not actually blocking the laser itself because the laser, uh, the lasers and the illuminator right here. Granted, this setup is probably not optimal for running the illuminator. So I'm gonna play with it, kind of probably modify it a little bit and uh, get something working. All I need to do uh, with the cable is kind of probably run some tape around the center right here in between the pressure pad, kind of get this cable out of the way like that. And uh, this cable right here is actually not being too bad. I can kind of run it in that channel. Maybe uh, one, one little uh, zip tie or something somewhere and uh, I'm good. So I have a way to activate the light. And as you can see, minimal flash signature on the suppressor itself, which is great and minimal shadow as well. In fact, I'm okay. I see it over kind of over, way over there. So with my actual beam, as I'm activating it, you'll see no shadow. There's a little bit right. When I get closer, you can see it. Then I get back and it's pretty much gone. And then laser. Sick. Now, I got the BCM grip because depending on, you know, this is a really small gun. Uh, one of my thoughts was, you know what? It might be really nice to have a right angle, you know, a right angle to kind of pull the gun into it, but also kind of roll my thumb up and manipulate the buttons, especially if I move the pressure pad down off the top. So that's where something like this, this BCM grip can really come into ha uh, come in handy. Oh, does come with an Allen key. And you know what? We are gonna want that. 
I was about to just throw the box away. Allen key, packaging. So, BCM grip. It is angled, has a slight angle to it. This can be really nice on certain guns where you may have a light uh, attached in a particular configuration. Um, on the gun, like an MCX with like a TLR2 with a laser, if you're gonna get all uh, British style. What I'm actually gonna do on this gun, because I will, I will play with this, I'm gonna mount it backwards on this gun. Um, We'll probably do it in the rear slot because I, I don't want to shoot my hand over and obviously touch the suppressor or the muzzle. So long uh, the long uh, Allen key that does come with is important because this is a long grip. Now, if you chop your grips, which is the real OG thing to do, uh, you won't have to worry about that as much. You can use standard Allen keys and you'll be fine. But if you have a standard long boy like this one, right out of the packaging, you are going to want the hex thingy it comes with. So now, I have something to kind of brace off of, kind of roll my hand over, which is a little more comfortable as far as activating the light and laser on this super short setup like this. If I was out here, it doesn't matter as much as my arm is in a more natural position, but on a short gun like this, having a little grip, it's also why the Magwell grip, you know, that was originally done for like SMGs and stuff like that. Uh, but having something like this can just make it a little more, a little more wieldy, a little more, you know, just intuitive body mechanically efficient, uh, especially as I'm activating my light and or laser. Light, laser. Man, I haven't even shot this thing yet. It's already sick. So, gonna tighten this down a little more. We'll, we'll use it, we'll use it, I like it. Can always ditch it. The reason to not use a grip like this, I mean, there's a few, but one reason is uh, in bags, that is an extra snag point. Uh, as you're pulling the gun from a bag, uh, that is an extra thing that can catch. But in this case, with the mag right there and it being so close to the mag, I don't think it'd be too much of an issue. All right, the sling. So the next most important part of the gun, which technically I probably should have, the two upgrades that you want to make to your gun. First is, I would argue, a, a weapon light before sling. Some people say, well, do the sling first. Well, you still can't shoot, but you can't see. So I would say white light comes before anything. Sling comes second, then red dot, then, well, you have to have sights first. So let's assume your gun has iron sights. White light, sling, red dot, trigger, bad lover, cool charging handle, like SD charging handle, you know, whatever it is. So now we're getting to the sling. T-Rex arm sling. This will be a, a gray, because, you know, we want a little, a little bit of color, a little two-tone, you know, aspect going on. Uh, oh, shoot, I should have done this earlier. Uh, <laughs> I should have done this early. Uh, so our sling comes with these two little uh, sling retainers. Uh, you can wear one as a bracelet, which is great. Uh, kind of joking, although people do ask about that all the time. You know, I just kind of da -da -da -da, like, oh, I have one now. Um, but the, what this was originally intended for was uh, sticking on the gun and leaving there to keep the sling all bound up uh, when you're, you know, not actually, uh, you know, need, you know, when you're not having the sling, you know, around you and you need to keep it compact to the gun. Now, unfortunately, I've already added the grip to this gun, uh, so that's going to make it a little bit harder. But I think we can we can make it work anyway. So we're going to use the black one because you know, matchy match. This is the trick. I may have to undo the grip for this. I should have done this earlier. Bring this around. You want it in front of the QD slot. I'll show you why. So it's going to sit about right there. That also helps keep the cables down, kind of. Only this one. So actually, I don't really need tape. I'm actually good to go. So there we go. So now we have our bungee ready to go. Awesome. Our two QD slots, or QD cups, whatever you want to call them. Boom. Boom. Packaging. Get rid of all that. Our sling does not come with a attachment attachment points because that really comes down to, you know, what your gun is or what you need. If you have a more traditional rifle, it's possible you don't need anything. You're just going to route that right in. Like uh, having a, we just got an MP5 SD on the traditional Navy stock. It's just a thing you throw the sling through and go back into the tri glide. No clasp needed, so you can save some money. Granted, it's also an MP5 SD, which you know it's expensive. Uh, so on this gun, because it's a modern weapon and has QD cups or QD points. We're gonna have to QD all the different areas. This is also a short gun, so right off the bat I know I'm gonna need to uh, tighten this down. There's a lot of adjustment range in the back and in the front. So we're gonna go ahead and make it pretty tight here. So normally I would snip that. And then our sling, we have a video on our website, I'm not gonna explain it here. Uh, you can actually change how the sling is actually adjusted, whether you push forward for it to loosen or push forward for it to tighten. 
Um, it ships in the configuration, which is more traditional, of you push forward to tighten, pull to the rear to loosen. That's usually how I like it. But I also have a lot of slings in what we consider reverse throw, I think is what we call it, where you actually push to the front to loosen and then you're on the gun, which is pretty cool. You can play with it if you want. We have a video on our website or on the sling page really showing how that works. Um, and again, I know this is a short gun, so I'm going to bring this tri-glide to here. Let's see if I can guesstimate it right. And again, I'm going to have to chop the excess. Let me route this through. Look, look at all that. Just look at all that excess. Yeah, that's nice. All right, so here we go. We've got our two QDs, got some excess to chop off. Now the Rattler has two QDs, one on each side of the gun. It's actually better to run it on this side. It helps keep it out of the way of your hand a little better. Just from what I've learned using MCXs over the past four years. There we go. All right. There we go. That's, pr that's pretty good. So then when I go to tighten it all the way, that's pretty good. Go to loosen. Get the pad behind me. And yeah, that's about, oh, my mic. That's about right. Where I go to transition, it can probably, it can go a little looser. I go to transition, the stock is right under my armpit. And then I come up like this and I'm set. Then to stow the sling, it's quite simple all the way tight, and this sling's a little stiff because it's brand new, they do break in. This is where this uh, little bungee is awesome. Let's assume the excess isn't there because I would chop that off. You can also tape it off, but then it's kind of bulky and in the way, I would say just chop it. Grab your bungee, that's located in front of the QD cup. Sling is now stowed, stock, and you're set. So then all you have to do, you pull it from your bag, you pull it from your car, or whatever, Pop the sling, throw it on, loosen, and you're set. So that is a full Rattler build with just some stuff here that we sell here at our company. All of this is available on our website. Most likely in stock, although of course with COVID and everything going on, there's a lot of stocking issues and whatnot, but we have our full light set up with you know, mount, pressure switch, pressure switch to this particular weird optic that has lasers built into it, uh, a, you know, a uh, foregrip, whatever you wanna call it, a grip just for some better ergonomics on this particular gun. And then of course the slang, which is uh, one of the most important parts of the weapon that holds the gun to you, basically the holster. And uh, we also have this little mount that we haven't used. We could always use it later if we pull the can and want to set up a little different. And yeah, pretty slick. All right, so we're at the range now because uh, we, we're not just gonna publish a video of me building a gun and not actually shooting it. So I haven't changed anything, literally came straight from the shop over here, uh, did a real quick zero. Uh, it is a little sunnyish overcast and kind of like I mentioned about this optic before, the biggest downside to this optic besides price point, of course, although considering what all it has with it, I mean, it's actually not too bad, but uh, is it's a super dim reticle, uh, the red dot itself. So I can just barely see it, super refined dot, which hey, for marksmanship is awesome, um, but for speed shooting and, and just sight acquisition in general, it's a little, little tougher. Uh, so I have the Surefire SPS on here. We're just gonna do a couple little, couple little experiments, little tests. These are sort of the drills that I'll do with a new weapon configuration or a new weapon to kind of get a feel for it, kind of understand kind of the weapon better. Uh, there's a couple things about this gun that I want to change. I want to add a Radian charging handle. This thing's a little small. Uh, the MCX charging handles are usually pretty tiny. For all this, I have a sidecar on. Oh shoot, there's no forward assist. Ah! There we go. Uh, there's no forward assist on this weapon. I like forward assist, so you can press check and then, you know, squish it in. Um, but, you know, that's a whole debate on the internet for whatever reason. Don't have it, do, don't, whatever. All right, so a little, just a little simple test. We'll just smash this guy right here next to this car. I am wearing hearing protection because, well, suppressors are quiet and subs are pretty quiet, and this gun, I'm sure, is going to be insane, but... Uh, so we're hearing protection anyway because I've already lost a little bit of hearing and so regardless of what I'm shooting I wear hearing protection um, So that is what it is now. It probably won't pick up the time, but we're gonna use a timer anyway just to have a You know, I like to have something to react off of in this case. It's obviously an auditory, you know, kind of a thing uh, But we're just gonna do five rounds from uh, seven yards on this guy and we'll uh, see what happens Oh, 
Oh my, oh my goodness. Yeah, we're not gonna get the time. It's too quiet. It's far too quiet. Oh, jeez. All right, so uh, headshot at five yards in under half a second is uh, my standard. You gotta do it three times in a row from low ready. So we're gonna, we're gonna give, that a, give that a whirl, see what happens. That felt like it was close. I have no idea what it is, but it is an A-box a hit. A-box hit again. Probably close, probably like a 5-2. And again, side acquisition, my, side, my dot is super damn, so it literally went to here. I was like, ah, I don't know where it is. Brought it over, saw it, took a shot, a little bit low, and that was definitely not in under half a second. But those are my ADS, my kind of my ADS speed from low ready. Uh, at five yards, head, head shots, not too bad, still all sub second, still all decent hits, especially these top two. Uh, not too shabby, not too shabby. Let's do a little, uh, I want, you know what, I wanna see how fast I can shoot this. This is a stock SIG trigger, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna see. We're gonna do like five rounds again. It's about as fast as I can shoot that gun. It's not bad though, not bad, not bad. Six rounds. We had one Charlie, look at this, man, it just sits. It doesn't move. It doesn't move. If this was a gun in Call of Duty, which it's not, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't move while you're shooting it. It would just be like, just sit there. Uh, steel, marksmanship, let's just do a little, uh, 25 yard, because now everyone's like, oh, you're only like five five feet away. Uh. So here we go, 25 yards, steel. C-zone, reduce C-zone, TA targets. No idea what that time is. So nice and fast, that's, that's around a second. That's definitely under a second. 25 yards. It'll still play, still be nice and fast. All right, little, uh, uh, well, actually, we're coming up on an empty mag. So this is what I do. I shoot a bunch of stuff, and when I come close to an empty mag, I get ready for a, uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and burn to 10 yards. Same dude. Uh, we're gonna shoot through this mag. It's roughly five to seven rounds. Transition to a handgun. So my Glock 19, iron sights, my suppressed, my dedicated suppressed pistol. Another six rounds, we'll go through the whole Back to rifle, fix it up, tack mag, pistol, do the whole thing. So we're just gonna burn this guy, transition, five more rounds, five or six. Uh, then we'll check hits, of course, and we'll just go through the whole motion. Let's do this. Those pistol shots were a little lackluster. 686 for all that. And I do all my subjective whatever. Tack mag and pistol. Back in the mag carrier. A little slow getting back on the safety. So it's two separate strings of fire to record the data two different ways. It's also fairly subjective when you go from rifle to pistol, exactly what you're doing. Some of these were my shoddy pistol shots, all the bigger ones. So I had, that's on the line, but eh. Three Charlie. Edge, okay, doesn't count, that's a miss. I wasn't shooting for the head. So three Charlie and that, that's absolutely ghastly. We'll do it one more time. Cause rifle to concealed is actually a thing. If you think about it, like, you know, you grab your rifle, your truck gun, something like this. You probably aren't having time to put on your entire like war belt and outside the waistband, like whatever. You're gonna have this gun right here. And then your rifle from your bag, your low vis bag, or, you know, whatever you're using. So for this, we'll isolate it out. So one, go back to the 15 round mag, this will just be one, same thing, two strings of fire. Good hit, not the best grip ever. So it was a 278, rifle to pistol from concealment. Pistol's a little. And the, uh, what I found with MCXs, or just like brand new MCXs, the bolt releases are stiff, charging handles are stiff. It just has to be like broken in. So right there, I kind of hit it and I'm like, oh shoot, gotta really make sure I'm center on it before I push it in. It's just a little stiff, takes a little bit of time. So my pistol shots are Charlie, that sucks. And uh, my rifle shots are good to go. 
not bad, not bad. Now for some aimbotting. So that's, I like to do speed splits up close, a little bit of marksmanship, a little further. So I had three consecutive hits on that all in around a second, which is pretty good. Now we do a target transition, some shooting on the move, and then there's something else that you, I don't know, I don't know if anyone else on YouTube has done this yet. So let me grab another mag, get rid of that. Sure, I have to oh, shoot. Oh, this is tricky. The way the targets are set with the cars and everything. Oh, this is wide. All right, so him. So this is about 160 degrees worth of transition. All three, left to right. We'll also do center left and right. So this is pretty brutal. This is pretty. This is some pretty spicy stuff right here. We'll just go two rounds. So a dollar per target, or no more, dollar eighty per target. We'll go left to right, nice and simple. All right, those are both alphas. Those are alphas. One Charlie. All right, now we'll go center left right. This is a lot harder. Keep my hips nice and wide. Going to be pushing onto each foot. I'm going to push on this foot to hit this guy. Push on this foot to hit that guy. Kind of flinched that shot a little bit. I'm gonna mark these up. That was two Charlies. I can clean it up. I can clean it up. I'm keeping the gun a little too glued to me. I'm trying to sweep the whole thing. When in reality, now we'll just do a straight 160. A 160, I would drop the gun. We'll do a straight up 160 right here. Yeah, something like that. Those are alphas right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got a neck shot, technically, Charlie, but I like him. I like him a lot. Oh, man, this gun's hot. This gun. All right, so now throttle control. So some target transitions, you know, nice 160, you know, from target to target and whatnot. Now we'll do a triangle drill. So I love this. That's why I have the steel right here. Oh, shoot. We'll save this for later. What we're doing is close to far. So I have to start fast and then control my speed to get my one hit on steel. But then we're also gonna flip flop it where it's fast to steal, take my time, get my hit, call it fast, fast. So this right here is one of the best drills you can do. Marksmanship, speed, discipline. All right, really hard to see the dot on him. I'm basically not even, I'm not even really seeing him. Now we'll do far to close. That's the aimbot right there. Damn, my Sharpie, it's gone. I must have dropped it somewhere. All A's, as you can see. That's around here somewhere. Won't worry about it. We'll do this again. This time it'll be close, steel close. So fast, fast on the transition. Make sure I get my hit, call it fastest target. So you're constantly throttling like this. Ooh, I, my, my, uh, I was fast on him, definitely under a second for my first hit. And uh, solid on him when I brought it over though, uh, it was one of these. That was already there from earlier. But the rest of everything is good to go. How much time? What have we done? Where are we at? 11. 11. All right. Now for something interesting. So you just heard that, I know, suppressed. Let's leave that right there. So I'm gonna be here, go there and come back. Paper, and then all three paper. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. It's gonna begin. 
All right, so the comparison is MP5 SD versus a 300 blackout Rattler. That is about the same size. So you guys didn't see that coming, did you? And you know what? I didn't either. Uh, so, you know, I just got, you know, just unlocked another gun, that's all. So as you can see, they're both about the same length. Thick stock, of course, standard Navy stock. Folding stock on this boy. And that's kind of old generation suppressed PDW gun. It's also the gun I've always wanted. We just got it this week. Dakota Tactical MP5 SD, BNT suppressor. We have the quad Picatinny mount that's coming in from BNT here in a little bit. And um, this is really my first time shooting one. I've No, I've, I've had them out here before. I haven't spent a lot of time on them because I like shooting my guns. I like shooting guns that you know I'm gonna be able to deck out. I can spend time on. I can use it at the armory. I don't really like using other people's guns. People offer to send us guns all the time, like their own, and I'm like, no. I want my own that I can paint and beat up and do stuff. So, let's go ahead and do this, because I'm personally curious. No ear pro, they're in blackout. Let's do it right here. Uh, I'll shoot past that steel, because if I hit the steel, it's too loud. Well. Okay. The microphone will not do justice, though. Jeez, they're very similar. They're very similar. This is slowing the round down though to be subsonic, but this is a subsonic nine mil round, you know, 115 grain versus a 220 grain projectile out of that gun going the same speed. So which do you think is more lethal and preferable? Well, that of course, come with me. I would save this for another video, but I must find out now. Same thing, five rounds up close. I wanna see how fast I can shoot this. It recoils less. Jeez, I'm gonna have a, this is a hoot. I'm gonna have some fun with this. And we're good. Ah, uh, may have thrown, oh no, shoot. It's the irons, oh no, oh no, help. Okay, I can still hit stuff, whew, good. So, with all that said guys, this is gonna need its own video, obviously. Uh, this is a semi-auto SD. It's not an auto. I mean, we can throw our auto lower in here, but frankly, I don't really care. Uh, I'd be shooting this gun semi anyway, but uh, pretty cool, cool comparison. You know, three, short 300 blackout guns, you know, did really come in here to replace older SMGs, older like MP5 SD kind of stuff. Uh, they're smaller, you know, they can get shorter. I mean, obviously you'd want to compare this to a uh, MP5K um, but I would still take this over an MP5K, just a more lethal round. Um, it's why 300 Blackout so awesome. Now, obviously, it's more expensive to get into. Um, that's a whole other thing. Plus, Rattlers are hard to find. We were fortunate enough to get this one through a guy on our website who emailed us. But, um, but again, MP5SC, same thing. I mean, this is like a $4,000 gun, and this is like a three dollars to $4,000 gun right now. Uh, so they're actually the same, and I would take that over this. As nostalgic and cool as this is, as I'm a gamer, and this was my favorite gun in COD 4, the original Modern Warfare, uh, Blue Tiger, Red Tiger, MP5 SD, uh, I would still take this gun uh, for everything, suppressed or unsuppressed, um, with standard optics or this boss. So, yeah. Well, I hope that was helpful, guys. Just a little, little bit of a, a little different kind of a video showing, you know, building a gun out, you know, from optic and suppressor all the way out to its accessories. You know, it's white light, it's laser, which we're not using right now, perhaps in another video. Um, and then we'll get to the MP5 SD, I'm sure, uh, coming up here in the future. So, there we go.